Welcome back to Diecast Resurrection. Today we are going to do a little bit of a special edition. So today I'm going to be answering your questions while I work on this little beauty. It's a 1970 Challenger that kind of had a dragster vibe to begin with, but I have a special paint job in mind for this bad boy. This was sent in by my man Logan. Why don't we just jump right into it and I'll just start answering your questions to the best of my ability. And we'll just make a nice little day out of it. How's that sound? First question comes from Josh W. And it is, do you have any auto body experience or just do good research? So my old man, when I was growing up, owned a cab company, like a taxi company. And he used to paint all the cars in our own garage at home. To answer your question, no, no, no professional training of any kind. I was around painting all through my childhood because my dad painted all those cabs. He painted my sister's first car, which was a little Chevette. Did a nice little black Chevette in the garage. And so yeah, I kind of just grew up around. It's kind of, it's just been in my blood, so to speak. A lot of influence from my dad on that one for sure. All right, next question. Diecast Cars 1 Games 2 asks, when will you do a 118 scale die cast or a 124 scale die cast? Well, the reason I haven't done a 118 scale car since I've been back to YouTube is because I don't have an airbrush or any other gun that's large enough to, to uh, do clear coat on a 118 scale car properly. Back in the day when I used to do these uh, 118 scales, like my Lambo here, I clear coated this with the airbrush and it's really hard to get a proper wet coat over this whole big car with that airbrush. It just doesn't have a big enough spray pattern. So quick answer is I don't have an appropriate gun to do big cars yet and that's because now, I don't have a lot of income coming in right now and if I were to buy a new airbrush that had, I don't know, like a six inch spray pattern or something, they're a little bit expensive. I'd want to get something decent, you know, like the probably $300 range. I just haven't pulled the trigger on it yet. So we've been just doing small projects for now, but I do have some 118 scale cars to do for sure. My man John Hatchett sent some in back in the day and uh, I still have some to work on here. I just don't have an appropriate gun at this point. I wanted to do kind of a vintage paint job on this thing that was colorful. Probably gonna have about four different colors on here and it should just come together as a beautiful, you know, 70s vibe kind of drag car. You see these holes in the roof, so I've, obviously you guys know this was some sort of police car. What it was was a it was like a Sheriff County drag car where the light bar was broken off it and there was a bunch of like dried crusty glue on here and it was kind of banged up. I apologize I didn't show you the before but it came with these big BF Goodrich like slicks. So that's what we're going to be putting back on. I pulled it off the rims because I planned to paint the rims. They were just black so... To make everything work, we're going to have a nicely painted car, multiple colors, chrome bumpers, aluminum, like center line wheels, and it should be just beautiful. I'm going to use a little bit of high heat putty here to just fill these little holes in the roof because we will not be going back to the police car today. This was a Jada Toys 164 scale. FYI, if anyone's wondering. So here's my putty, two part. Ooh. It's as simple as taking a slice and then kneading the two parts together. So let me just get rid of this nasty bit here. This stuff obviously has a little bit of a shelf life. This tube is over over a year old anyways. Next question comes from Guitar Rockstar 5683. Where did you get the idea for Jimmy? Well, Jimmy started out as an HO gauge railway figurine. And I was at the hobby store one day and I thought, man, it'd be hilarious to have some little characters to just make some like side jokes with. So I picked up the original batch of characters were these guys. So this is, we named this guy Preacher Dan cause, he, <laughs> cause he's got a little book open all the time. And I think this was the original, what do we call her, Susan? Something like that. But um, yeah, I mean, their scale is like way out to lunch, right? That's a teeny little person. Or you compare modern Jimmy, he's more of an appropriate size. 
And uh, yeah, the original Jimmy, I stuck him in, I think it was a nitty gritty kitty window and I did an intro and it was just kind of an instant success. Hey friends, today we're working on a nitty gritty kitty. I'm gonna get this all mixed up here. I got the furnace running in the background, but I gotta move because this putty is gonna dry. So I got a couple little balls here. <laughs> we're just gonna Play-Doh factory these things from the bottom. So once those two little spots dry, we'll just cut them flush and we'll put a little finishing putty on there and uh, yeah, you'll never know. We're gonna give this a few minutes to dry here. I'm actually gonna go throw it in the paint oven because you can speed cure this stuff with heat, so I'll go do that and I'll be right back. Byron's Shop asks, is a 40 year old virgin movie based on your life? Ha ha ha. You know, I make that joke all the time, especially when it comes to these little figurines because I always think of that, uh, that clip from the movie where he's sitting there going, I'm going to make your red pants blue. So I always make that joke, but funny thing is, if you look at my channel right now and how many views I get per video, it's enough money to pay the rent. So this is a full-time gig. So you can make your jokes, but I do this every second day and it pays the bills. David T asks, do you have an OnlyFans page? <laughs> no, I make that joke all the time as well. I always put these fake links for my OnlyFans pages everywhere and uh, <laughs> That's just me being silly with my personality. Will Graves asks, I got interested in Diecast Restro because of you and Bare Metal. Who got you started? So I had another YouTube channel that was failing. Uh, I worked on it for about a year and only had about 350 subscribers. Maybe daddy needs one of these. Daddy's nerves are getting to him. Woo! Uh, welcome to Gear Review. I'm your host, Tactical Poutine. I was kind of looking for something different, and one day I was laying on the couch watching YouTube on TV, just flipping through things, and I saw this thumbnail for a crusty old red line restoration, and it had like a million and a half views, and I'm like, wow, like that's something I could do maybe so I watched that video and the end result of this car there was like full-on pubes in the paint fluffies cookie crumbs whatever the paint job the color was okay but like the paint job itself had a bunch of stuff in it and I'm like oh my god I could do a better paint job than that right now so I kind of tore down my old set, what I had, and turned it into a workbench similar to this. And then I tried it. I made my first video, which was um, that little pacer I did. And I think my second video was uh, a super van, a Hot Wheels super van. And the way everything got started was I was approached by one of those Facebook companies where all they do is take your videos and post it on their pages. And they're like, hey, we want to take some of your these restoration videos and post them on our pages on Facebook. And back then I didn't have a whole lot of views or subscribers. I think I had a thousand subscribers. And I was like, yeah, sure. I mean, use, use all the videos you want. And that one super van video started to go viral on Facebook. And I don't know why, cause the video wasn't very good. The paint job was just terrible. And the filming and audio, it was all bad. But that thing got like a million views on Facebook for some reason. And it's been feeding subscribers to the channel ever since. So I'd say the first six months of my channel, there was a huge boom in subscribers. And I jumped up to like 20,000 and then to like 40,000. And it was really, really fast. And it's all kind of like accidental. People used to think that... Um, I used to buy subscribers and stuff like that, but no, it came from Facebook. So any of you guys out there that have diecast channels, make sure you have that business email in the about section of your page because those Facebook guys will come calling. And when they do, don't feel like you're giving away your content for free because those guys have millions and millions and millions of followers 
And if you can get your videos on those pages, it's crazy what they can do for your channel. But that initial video I saw, that's what inspired me. I'm like, oh, I could do a paint job like that at least. So I did and yeah. That's how everything got started. Adam Johnson asks, are you ever gonna be doing any auctions for any of your cars? That's a good question. I always get personal messages, people wanting to buy specific cars. I never know what to do with those kind of questions because you know, the Honda, I put a ton of work into these. I can't put a price on most of these cars because I just got too much work into them. For each of these projects, you know, I kind of live in the moment of the project and once they're completed, I don't really have any attachments to any of them, so so maybe like a year-end auction or something would be a good idea just to clear out some inventory and give you guys a chance to get some of these little projects for your shelves. Let me go check on our little uh, challenger. I'll see if it's ready. Whew, that's a little spicy. Whew, it's hot. I'll give that a second to cool off. I'm just burn my fingers. Carl K also asked, what do you use to edit your videos? I used to use Adobe Premiere but it was kind of more complicated than it needed to be for my style of video, so I switched to Sony Vegas. If you're just starting out, you could use an editing program like Wondershare, that's probably like really user-friendly, and then like intermediate Sony Vegas, which is what I'm using right now. If you're doing a lot of special effects, Adobe Premiere. I've used all three, and uh, right now Sony Vegas is, uh, is where it's at, for me anyways. And you can find free versions of all these softwares if you're a little bit tech savvy. I'm not going to tell you how to do that. I'm going to leave that part up to you. I don't want to condone any kind of activities of that sort. I'm just going to cut these flush if I can here. Beautiful. Isn't that nice? That silver, that sealer, isn't that nice stuff? You can barely even see our little holes. They'll be completely gone by the time we get to clear coat. I'm gonna just start doing some tape in here. We'll answer a couple more questions. No big deal. Scuzz Jumper asks, what kind of dog was Moses? Moses was a, a black lab I picked up for $75. <laughs> he was a year old when I got him, so he was just getting out of that awkward puppy stage. Best dog I ever had. That's back when I lived in Saskatchewan. I had myself a nice little acreage. 13 acres of land. Yeah, those were the days. Those were the days before everything went to crap in the oil industry. I'm gonna probably do that little curve, I think, with vinyl instead. And make it happen here. Now that that vinyl's down, I can cut this tape safely without getting all the way through. So it's kind of going to treat that vinyl like a little cutting board. Sweet. So I want to do that on both sides and just, we're going to do a real nice, I don't know, it's, it's more than a two-tone. You'll see. You'll see. I ain't going to give it, I mean, going to give it away this time. We're just going to do it. Randy Hessel asks, where's Andy been? I hope he's healthy. And he's been working on the other channel. He's been working on the XMC Racing. Extreme Downhill Diecast Racing. So it's gonna be like a, you guys remember that weird XMC like most extreme elimination challenge that used to be on TV where they had those uh, those little Japanese characters that were had English dubbed over top of it. That's kind of what inspired Andy to build his racetrack. And uh, he wants to have like almost like a diecast obstacle death race. So if you don't want to miss that, check out XMC Racing on YouTube here. There's a link in the description for it. And that's Andy's page. If you wonder where he is, he's over there 3D printing all kinds of stuff. He's got bridges and tunnels and he's going to be 3D printing all the buildings and everything. So if you're, if you're looking for the 3D, 3D printing content like this, that's all going to be over on that XMC page now. So 
this is what stage he's at now. So I won't be able to answer too many questions on it because he's the one who's been doing everything. I don't know what products he used or anything. I've been kind of just focusing on this channel. So if you have questions for Andy or you miss him, XMC Racing over there, he's got a Patreon page where you can uh, subscribe to get all his track pieces, all the plans for his 3D tracks and everything. And if, you're, if you want to submit cars on that, I think priorities go to his patron members first and then it'll be open to just the general public for uh, submitting cars to races and stuff so all right, just gonna make sure this grill is masked off nicely here man there's a lot of talking in this video you guys can hear my throat is deteriorating sweet so this is about ready to go spray our first color so that's awesome maybe i'll do one more question first before we go to the spray booth let me look mg asks out of all the cars you've done which car would you want to own and drive Easy question. I would buy a 1970 Plymouth Roadrunner. Would probably be my, my like dream muscle car. And if I could build myself a truck to drive every day, I think I would do a square body Chev that's got an upgraded like LS motor, some nice uh, fuel injected, automatic, nothing fancy, nice clean paint. And that would be my daily driver and I'd drive that through winter and just keep it nice. Just vintage, but upgraded vintage. That's what I would want. We'll go to the spray booth. We'll do some brandy wine. Beautiful color. You guys are going to love this. All right, brandy wine. That went on real nice. Let's have a little look-see here. I do a technique that's called dry spraying, where you're using way more air than you should be using. But what you end up with is these really sharp lines on your body because you never actually did a wet coat. So using my candy paints, Dry spraying works amazing, and that's why I always go to them. But you never see me lay down a big wet coat on there, and that's because I don't need to. I can build it up doing dry spray techniques, and you just end up with real crispy lines. So that looks amazing so far. We're going to be putting a few more colors on here though, so it's going to look even better. Hopefully. Peter Wood asks, question, when are we getting another White Russian live stream? I feel like I could drink on camera if the end result is an edited video, but doing it live where I have like hundreds of viewers, I don't know if that's the, the right thing to do at this point in the game, Peter Wood. I appreciate your question though, homie. 10 millimeter garage asks, what are the tattoos on your arm? All right, one you guys always see, is this she's looking a little rough these days but this was a it's kind of an anime vampire girl with a big snake got some cleave some of y'all probably think it has from prison but it's actually from a house party a buddy of mine was getting some tattooing done by a friend of his and uh, i just happened to be there he's like you want a tattoo i'm like hell yes <laughs> we just we were listening to dragon force drinking beer and getting tattooed it was a good time. So we got a couple more colors to put on this thing. It's all going to be below the brandy wine. So you, I'm going to tape the brandy wine off now, and we're not going to see it again until the end of the video. For those of you uh, little gamers out there who have uh, Forza Motorsport Seven, one of you very talented subscribers imported my paint job for the skyline I just did. If you go in the game and you buy 
one of those vintage skylines, you can now use my paint job in the game, which is crazy. Tux for Press asks, will the guitar bandits reunite to terrorize the countryside once again? Yeah, in the front. Their, their own sign. <laughs> <laughs> We're in, boys. We're in, boys. Yeah. Don't kill these guys. Whatever you do, do not kill them. Yeah. I like the I like the touch with like the background. Yeah. Beautiful. You know what? That was such a fun day. <laughs> That's another prime example of what happens when you uh, drink and play video games at the same time. You end up with crazy stuff like that. All right. For the next color, I have um, a little bit of lemon yellow here with one drop of grabber orange. That's kind of the color I want to end up with, so it's going to take a few coats to get there, but we're going to build it up to get a kind of yellowy orange color for our second our second application. So let's go back to the spray booth. All right, this is looking pretty good so far. I want to do one more color though. I want to try to get some orange in here. All right, I guess we're gonna just go for it. I'm gonna spray some orange on both sides in there. I'm just gonna, I have the same mixture still sitting in the tent. I'm gonna just add more grabber orange to it. All right, I think that's looking pretty decent. Gleek, 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 gleek. So I painted the wheels. These were black before. Now we got like aluminum center lines. Hell yeah, man! That thing's got the look. Anyways, I'm gonna uh, do. I'm gonna go do a final clear coat, and then uh, we can come back and look at doing an assembly here. So this is gonna be pimp. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back with our body. Have a look at this. So I dried this in the little oven for about two hours and I actually ended up taking one of the light bulbs out of my oven. It was getting a little bit too hot. This is looking real good. I'm just about ready to do an assembly. I've mounted our wheels. Just replaced those little caps that hold the axles in. Little teeny little dabs of super glue. 
So that's ready to go and uh, yeah. So we could plug our bumpers back into here and we'll have a look. Maybe while I'm doing this, we'll answer another question. Uh, where are we at here? Ev Horne 969 asks, what brand of hemostat do you use in the paint booth and where do you get them? Well, that's a good question. Most of the hemostats that I would find on Amazon when you search hemostats kind of look like surgery type stuff. And as you guys know, I've been using these big beefy ones for quite some time now. I have a few pairs of them. And all three of these, believe it or not, come from the fishing aisle at the local hardware store. So anglers will use these to, uh, yeah, hook onto like a fishing hook that, you know, got swallowed by a fish or whatever. And uh, yes, yeah, these are nice and bulky. They've been absolutely solid since new. So I've been using the same two pairs for years. As you guys can tell, these things are just getting worn out. I would definitely, if you can find this exact kind, I'd buy more of these. If you have the choice between longer and shorter, I would always get these longer ones because they have more flex and you'll have a larger range of items that you can clamp on. <laughs> Lee asks, what was the original story behind the infamous onion bun debacle? That was just uh, a little bit of uh, me and Andy going back and forth during a live stream about what was the best for making sandwiches with. And we had the chat room kind of divided into two, <laughs> two groups. So I'm, I like the onion bun flavor. I'd rather have the cheese in my sandwich than on the bun. So <laughs> that's where that came from. Jake Rubino asks, what ride do you have in real life? Well, right now, I'm driving a 1997 Tahoe, two-door, 350 Vortec. Yeah, she's been good. She's been a good ride. It's a little schmag or something on the glass I just cleaned off with a little bit of polish. Brian Perkins asks, how much do you charge to redo cars for a customer? Well, truth be told, first things first, I consider myself a content creator. More, more so than a car customizer or um, you know restoration specialist or whatever you want to call me. Any cars that I do for other people, I usually do it for the content. This is gonna be peep. Okay, give me a second and we'll just blubs this thing into frame and uh, we'll have a look at it. The lighting isn't as good, so let's get it up on the rotisserie. Ah, that's much better. Need that mirror to just kind of bounce the light that's above and get that nice kind of underglow. So here's our little challenger. I ended up putting a, one little light coat of hot rod sparkle over everything. And I use red sparkle so you don't really notice it too much. If you guys can see it. Those little glints that are sparkling just a little bit more than the rest, that's the hot rod sparkle. And it'll do the same thing on the orange too. It's just harder to see. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Um, I answered a lot of questions. There's a bunch I didn't do, obviously, just because there's too many, but we could do a couple more. Diecast164 and more asks, what casting or castings would you like to do that you don't actually have? One of the castings I've been having trouble finding in general is... Uh, just square body Chevys. You know, everyone buys those up. When you price them out online, they're like so extremely inflated that I just won't touch them. So that's a casting that if I ever see them at Walmart, I'm gonna buy a whole ton of them, but I never ever see them. Max's Outdoors asks, what is your coolest Hot Wheels? You wanna see my coolest Hot Wheels right now? I'll show you my current favorite. This one was a donation from McSqueaky, but I absolutely love this thing. Check it out, boom. Jun, 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 jun. That's not mint, obviously. You see, it's missing half its push bar, but dude, look at the wheels on that thing. Glee, 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 glee. Beautiful. He sent me a bunch of these military uh, muscle machines. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with them yet, but here's another good example. Another one he sent. Again, like crazy awesome. I can't believe it even exists. That looks like it's like kind of like an old power wagon. Grill's kind of bent, bumper's busted off, so neither of these have like a lot of collector value, but I mean, look at them, they're just amazing. So I'm very proud to display these anywhere. We can put them on the bench for a while. Beautiful looking machines. Scott W asks, on average, how long does it take to complete one of these projects? 
Uh, it, it varies, obviously, depending on how much work I'm doing and how many, usually the determining factor is how many times I got to clear coat something. Um, but for the most part, a project like this today where I'm only doing one one clear coat application, no matter how many how many actual coats, I'm, I only clear coated this car one time, I will have this car done and the video edited and posted same day. I did this in two days. I did this in one day, you know, plus video. For the most part, I don't know, the actual time spent doing the painting and stuff really isn't that long on a car like this, so. You can get them done pretty quick. So that'll probably be the last question I do today. Uh, going forward, if you guys want to be, if you want to have your questions answered in my videos, let's start using hashtags. So if you ask a question, let's use hashtag ask me anything. That way I can just search using the hashtag on my end and I will just get a big list of all the comments and I can just print them out. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm not sure what's coming up next. Uh, maybe a team transporter or something like that. I'll start working on some ideas and uh, I'll see you in a few days. Have a great week, you guys. See you later.